We've got about 30 seconds here. Get your bets in. I suppose, I suppose the bets have already been done, so I can't get them in any. Anyway, here we go. Hello, my name is Nobody. Welcome to the third game. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be an arena game. And we're going to see Aztecs and Mayans War. So again, Mesosivs. Over in the top left side, we have Fiage playing in the purple, hot purple, as Aztecs. And in the top right side, we're going to have Dogao playing as the Mayans. So we have the Brazilians on this top side. On this bottom left side, we're going to have Yannick playing as the Mayans. And on the bottom right, we will have Mingo playing as the Aztecs. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for any sort of laming. We see two sheep on the forward here. So Fiage is going to take his forward sheep first. And that's the smart thing to do when you uh, expect your opponent's going to lame you on arena. I don't see any boars. There's one boar outside the walls here. This one's pretty vulnerable. And Dogao should try to protect it. Two sheep not found for Mango, though. Those will definitely be stealable. And it looks like uh, Yannis is going to get lucky here, and he's going to be able to, to pick, uh, take up the sheep. I know what strat's coming now. Are you uh, are you alluding to the Aztec Monk Rush or the Mayans Fast Imp? Those are the two that I would think are the most deadly here. BH is going to win this early scout battle, and Yannick's going to have to run away. Top side, don't see any lame. Oh! Mango's going to go for the boar lure here. And Dogao should be able to see this. On the spot side, just a little bit of a scuffle. And nothing really going on over there. Eagle down to about half health right now. Just let's get a little bit farther. And the only chance for Dogao right now is just to get, get a full block in right now. And he's going to move the wrong direction right now. Mango's going to come back in on the right side. Coming down the bottom. I feel like I'm casting a horse racing. Like I'm horse race announcer. And down to the bottom. Mango's going to keep moving. And... It looks like he's going to get this boar lure. And Dogao's going to call a re because of this. They're going to have a restart here. We know what the sibs are now. Somehow a few ages scout got in here. I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, it's usually not something that you like, I believe. So we're going to see an Aztec, uh, Aztec Mayan War. Uh, this is Arena, of course. The high tower saying that it's risky um, if the slinger gets monk siege pushed, which is uh, quite correct. I think the Aztecs have the strongest uh, monk rush on arena of any civ. Yes, Saren Addings, this game is uh, is very fun. Um, the great thing about Age of Empires, though, it's not only fun at the top level, which we're uh, watching right now. It's also extremely fun um, even at lower levels or intermediate levels. It's really a game. That has a quite quite large range and appeal. So we're gonna see the Aztecs Mayans. Where we could, the standard for the Aztecs is definitely gonna be that strong, you know, two three monastery, making some eagles from the barracks, maybe two barracks, and then a siege workshop. And that can be pretty brutal in an Aztecs war. Um, usually, you see kind of a a bit of a a bit of a snowball effect, where once the first conversion, once the second conversion gets a uh, goes in favor of one player, you, you, it's really hard to come back after that. But uh, this is an Aztec versus Aztec war. And we're going to see the mines as well. One of my favorite strategies for the mines, though, is um, the mines being slung up to uh, up to do a fast imp, get the forward castles out and the uh, forward trebs. And this can be really hard to stop, depending on the kind of map, of course. Uh, some maps, it's more effective than others. But maybe we don't see either of those anyway. We see a standard play from the Mayans. And just a standard boom from the Aztecs into Eagle Warriors.
Who is in the other semis? Let's check. We have 2 minutes 30 before the game starts. So for, the, for those of you that have uh, just joined or just uh, joined since I started casting, let's go look at the let's look at the brackets. And here we are. So as you can see here, Fiej and Dogao, CZ Mango versus uh, Mango and Yannick. Winner will move on to the finals. And we have 2-0 victories here all in the first round. On the other side, we have MBL and Leary, very strong, uh, very strong players versus Air and Tato, also very strong players. A lot of Czech players here: Air, Leary, uh, Yannick, Mango, and I expect the finals matchup to be very, um, very uh, close and entertaining matchup as well. This matchup should be very close as well. Both teams winning 2-0, and we all know who those players are. Hello, my name is Nobody, and welcome to the third game in the Absolute Random Cup semifinals between the Brazilians and the Czech. We have in the bottom left corner, Fiage playing as the Aztecs. And in the top left side, we have Dogal playing as the Mayans. So we're going to have a mezzo, mezzo of war, Aztecs and Mayans here. On the bottom right side, we have Yannick in the blue trunks playing as the Mayans. And in the top side, in the teal... We have Mango playing as the Aztecs. Let's see if any laming is going on early on. Nothing to be lamed over here, just two sheep. I think that uh, Fiege is going to get over there in time. And Mango's going to take his uh, sheep right here. Those secret sheep are going to take some time to get to this gate. I wonder if Dogao's. Looks like Dogao's going to try to intercept them. Brazilian team already using their restarts. Fiji is going to collect his sheep. And here comes Dogao. Mango's going to try to intercept the cat scout. I can't tell who got the first hit. Like in Star Wars, who shot first? Oh man, I think it's going to be Mango. I wouldn't bet on it though. And... <laughs> Dogao's gonna run away at the last second. Apparently, he figured it out before I did. But it looks like it's gonna be too late. Two health left. Just gonna take one more hit here. It just needs to get over the gate. It's a foot race. And it looks like he's gonna get through. Just barely saving the eagle. That's huge for Dogao. With that eagle, he's gonna be able to lure. He's gonna be able to find these sheep, importantly. Definitely something you don't want to lose this early on. Doesn't look like he has any deer to lure, though. But that's so important for him to be able to have that eagle. And not much else going on at this time. So bottom side, we have red and blue, which will be Aztecs and Mayans. So we're going to have the opposite Civ's face off. Let's take a look at their maps. VH has got plenty of deer here. And that's going to be lovely for him. One forward gold, but he has his, this back gold here. Not a lot of space in the back. That doesn't go deep into the wood line. So possibly could be vulnerable if a uh, maybe with a castle and trebs. I'm not exactly sure. Topside Dogao. He's got a much more vulnerable gold, but it's not that vulnerable. Would be much more vulnerable here. Second gold is forward. There is a back gold over here for Dogao, so he should be fine with gold. Mango, he does have four deer. That's plenty of deer. Back stone, very important for the mines. Although uh, Mango's playing as the Aztecs. And it looks like he has only access to one gold. The rest of his golds are outside over here. So Mango's going to have to make sure not to lose this gold. And it looks like it will be in the range of monks if a monk gets right over here in this corner. I think Yannick's going to try to lure these deer in. This gold looks pretty uh, pretty safe, kind of in the back.
and stones are exposed, which is not something you want as a mines player. So what kind of strategies can we see? Um, as I was talking about previously, maybe we could see a sling to the mines, go for a fast imp, forward castles, and a lot of plumes and trebs. Trebs could be very devastating, I think on a map like Fiages, because Fiages doesn't have a lot of space to boom in the back. Uh, kind of arguable, though. So that strategy could be potentially pretty strong. Uh, maybe we see that the famous Aztec uh, Monk Rush. Monks, of course, getting more HP. Um, generating relic gold faster and uh, monasteries building faster for the Aztecs. As well as the Eagle Warrior being a good su uh, support unit. Maybe we'll see them forward onto the Mayans. Take a look at relic positioning two here. One here and then two, uh, two in the back. Better relic positioning for the Brazilian team. And then maybe we see the players just play it standard. Um, three town center boom for both players going plumes archers for the for the Mayan player and then uh, eagles for the Aztec player. Wouldn't counterpicking Tudens be great? Um, I believe it's uh, I I believe it was random. I can't believe if I can't believe if it was uh, team random or um, or the other way around. Tunins, they get a good economy bonus with their farms, and most notably, they are very good at resisting monk rushes due to their resistance bonus. But uh, other than that, um, as uh, Nopeford said, they are a slow sieve. Uh, particularly their paladins and uh, Teutonic knights are slow, although that's not what I think he meant. But yeah, it's easy to counter um, counter paladins when, when you have halbs. I don't think Tunins is the strongest pick here. Feudal Age for Mango, he's going to go up on 26 pop. He's going to go up on one one less pop. We'll see if he can pull it off. Yannick and Dogao going up to the next age. Feudal a little bit behind. He'll be the last one to go up. He's going to go up on 28 pop. So 26, 27, 27, and 28. Feudal, he's going to go for early stone. I'm not sure why. Oh, this is kind of interesting, actually. And he's already got four in gold here. So two, re two reasons you might want to do this. A, you want to get your third town center out really quickly. Or B, you want to go for a castle. Most likely a defensive castle if he's playing as Aztecs. Or he wants to sling it away. I'm not sure. Um, My bet would be on the last option. Sling it away. But we'll have to see. Mango going to be the first here. Also going to stone, and I think we're going to see the same strategy from these players. Let's just double check to be sure. He has enough to go up to the next age, but I don't see a blacksmith being made. He doesn't have the wood. And double bid axe being done. I don't know if that's diagnostic though, and horse collar. And coinage, so I think we're going to see the same strategy here. Both players are thinking about slinging the mines. And you can see the identical upgrades coming in here. And somehow, how did this how did this eagle get walled in? I have no idea. That's, that's kind of hilarious. And that eagle's going to go down here. That's going to be Fiege's eagle, the Aztec's eagle. Not the biggest deal, I think. I think the Mayan eagles are going to be more important here. Castle Age coming from Yannick. Coinage from Fiege. We're going to see both a, a double sling. So really, we're going to ignore for the time being the Teal player here and uh, Fiege. Fiege is even double walling through here. And let's pay attention to Dogal and uh, Yannick. Yannick's going to be the first one to get up to the next age. And Dogao's going to be on one population more. <laughs> yeah, sling to rush out paladins. Oh no, plumed arches! I saw PA and I automatically thought paladins.
So we're just going to see this typical mines work here. We're going to see a lot of plumed archers, and uh, first to get Siege Ram is going to be a ha going to have a huge advantage. Not sure what players are acting at this point. Question is, do the mines players focus on the slinger or the person being slung? And obviously, they're much closer to the Aztec players here. So much Xing. Just chasing down the uh, eagle. I think Dogao's eagle may go down here. He's pretty far away from his base. Gonna take an extra hit here, and that could be uh, that could be the killing blow. And it's gonna try to intercept it on the bottom side. And so much Xing. Dogao's gonna be up to the next age. Here's the forward castle. Very important he gets the forward castle up. It's really going to accelerate his push. And down the eagle's going to go. At the same time, because these eagles are distracted, uh, Mango's not going to be able to directly see this castle. And he's going to be in some trouble. No double walls coming in. We have mentioned the forward gold uh, from earlier in the game. VH has taken the extra precautions here and has stonewalled. And Yannick has chosen to go for the defensive castle. I'm kind of wondering why. I think the forward castle is going to be more beneficial here. Castle going to be able to be a nice uh, foothold and uh, help bust through these walls here. Whereas the defensive castle, not so much. Both Mayans players probably thinking about going into the Imperial Age pretty soon. To get out those trebs and bracer. Dogao's gonna be the first to click up here. And finally the walls coming up for Mango. I wonder if they will be up on time though. Yannis going to move over try to defend his ally here. Could do a little bit of harassment uh, over here. Just maybe on these few gold miners. And hopefully they don't run headlong into the castle. Looks like they will. Going to lose a little bit of health here. And Mango's going to make a gate for his ally. So this is where the majority of this action is going to be, right in the screen right here. A lot more plumed archers from Dogao, and he has the, and he has the timing advantage. So just cleaner build from him and his ally. And second castle coming up from Dogao. And once again, just going to be a nice foot, uh, a nice place to push. Gonna be able to take out these walls, take out a few farms. And then plumed archers can just stroll right in. Shot it. So we're gonna be up to the next age. I would not be surprised to see. Where is it? Trebuchet coming out. Oops, there we go. And there's the first two trebs. Gonna deploy into this town center. And Bracer coming straight away as well. The majority of the resources right now I expect going to be uh, for the plumed archer upgrades. We have Bracer done. We're gonna see uh, chemistry and ballistics being done. Maybe a few of the armor upgrades as well. And then after that some siege rims. And that's really all you need. That's the bread and butter for the Mayans. Yannick's gonna place his defensive castle here. Looks like Phage actually didn't need these double walls here. And here's the first trip. Mango already losing quite a sizable portion of his economy here. And here's the plumes. Essentially, Yannick defends at this point. Upgrades are equal right now. The thing is, Dogao can lose a fight here and still be in the game. But if Yannick loses this fight, Mango's just going to go down in an instant. You can see these villagers want nothing to do with this uh, top side of the economy. And the plumed archer soon is going to move in. Where is the plumed archer from Yannick? Where is he going? And at the same time, Dogal probably doesn't want to lose too many of plumed archers here. 
Gonna get three villager kills. And cause a mass exodus. He's now gonna regroup. Armor upgrade's still the same right now. Chemistry being done from Yannick, that, that, that could be a nice advantage. And he's gonna take a few plumed archers here. Yannick four ahead in the military. He's gonna have the chemistry up earlier. Dogao's gonna have padded archer armor, which will negate the chemistry. But Mango's in a much worse shape here, and because of that, he's going to be able to provide a much worse sling than uh, the age will. And all these resources invested in these farms, pretty much useless at this point. Chemistry coming in from Dogo, I think that's a much more important upgrade than chemistry. And third castle here. Mango, essentially nowhere to run here. And Dogao's going to try to continue to push through here. Cannon Archer Armor Ballistics coming in from Yannick. And Army Count looks about even right here. Upgrades just slightly in the favor of Dogao, I think. Looks like he's gonna try to is he gonna try to take out the treb first? These trebs are gonna try to deploy here. And this trebuchet essentially acting as a uh, as a poor ram. It's gonna go down now. It looks like in the first big fight, I think Yannick's winning this. You can see so many dead bodies here. And still one armor up from Dogal. And it looks like Dogao will push this back now. Elite Plume Narch is huge upgrade. And Dogao, he's going to invest into Cap Ram instead. We'll see which one of these pays off right now. Essential Yannick doesn't lose any of his castles. Another castle coming in from Dogao. Just going to castle the entire map. And Yannick is on a clock right now. He needs to be able to take out these trebuchets. Capped Ram, here's going to be the first... No, we don't see any siege workshops here. So the rams are going to be delayed here. Just a few rams right at this uh, right at this moment would really help a lot. Elite Plumed Archer done now. 15 extra health on them. It looks like Yannick doesn't have the numbers here. Castle going down, no villagers repairing it. Ring Archer Armor, that's another big upgrade. Two extra armor. And Elite Plumed Archer now coming in. So finally Yannick able to push it back, even though he had less numbers here, due to the upgrade advantage. And this is going to keep him in the game. Where are those capped rams? No capped rams being made right now from Dogao. And now we have Ring Archer armor on these Plumed Archers. An extra two Pierce armor for them. On the bottom side, we're going to see some uh, Ram pushes into the Ages base. Thumb Ring, another very important upgrade for um, the Plumed Archers. Take a look at the military counts now. Dead even. Dead even with uh, Yannick having the upgrade advantage, but Dogal having capped rams. And I don't know if you're able to see it, but uh, these archers are going to resist a lot more air fire, fire due to their two extra armor. Finally, the ram's going to come in. Ram will be able to take about 200 plumed archer shots. And could even get some trebs here. Yannick knows this is going to focus down the ram, but at the same time, plumed archer's firing at the back. And we need to see some rams out of Yannick. Finally, ring archer armor being done from Dogao. And Dogao's going to lose a castle here.
And right now, Castle Cow, 3 to 4. Dugout really should make a lot more use out of these rams. They're able to do so much for his army. As you can see right now, uh, Plume Darcher is able to fire on top of the Plume Darchers of Yannick. Just because that ram was threatening the trebuchets here. The other castle coming up in the back is going to be 4 to 4 again. And we need to see more siege workshops here. It looks like Dugout doesn't have the economy for it. And on the bottom side, we have a breakthrough. Bunch of rams coming in, a lot of plume archers. And Fiege is going to have to do a mass exodus of his own. Huge migration. Looks like we're seeing a bit of a momentum swing here. Another castle looks like it's going to go down from Dogao. Here comes another ram. Without even fight here, I think that Dogao's actually winning it. And on the bottom side, just total chaos. These villagers didn't get away in time. They're going to try to rewall? No, they're going to run through for their lives as they're getting shot at point blank with arrows. And that's really, that's really sad. <laughs> so these villagers don't even have clothing on their backs. Just carrying what the, just carrying the wood that they have with them. And that's gonna be a big blow to Fiege. Let's take a look at Mango's population, 54 vills, about the same number of vills as Fiege. Remember, uh, Mango got hit pretty early on. And military count right now, it's a huge difference. Look at this military difference. Remember, half of Mango, uh, Yannick's military is on the bottom. 65 military for Yannick and 23 from Dogao. And if you look at team scores here, 61 to 45. It's a, it's a huge difference right now. Siege Ram, Heavy Plow. And Siege Ram, I think, is going to be the killing blow here. But suddenly, the Brazilian team, their score is just dropping dramatically. And nice comeback on this top side here. Yannick, of course, losing the first castle, and now uh, now he's taken three castles from Dogao. Squires, scale mail armor. I'm not sure why he's going into uh, Eagle Warriors. When uh, this combo seems to be working out perfectly fine for him. And there's GG. So both mines players getting slung. I thought this push had a lot more potential here due to the castle positioning and uh, faster uptime. Uh, most of the engagements were pretty easy. Mango had to run away quite early. And then uh, Yannick losing the first castle in the game, but able to push it back, uh, able to push it back and uh, take the next three castles of Dogao. And the next game will be starting shortly. <laughs> Let's update the scoreboard here. Two one since this is a best of five. First to three wins, we'll take the series. After the series, we have Real Time Strategy League, uh, which is the official like Age of Empires clan uh, clan masters league, uh, run by uh, Black Adder. And that has just started. There's going to be plenty of matches uh, both after the series and on Sunday. And uh, Fiege will be playing in one of these matches, Matches, I think uh, maybe an hour or two from now.
Next game will be Ultra Random, which I've actually never seen. So this will be quite interesting. Team Random Civs. And one thing I love about this tournament is actually um, all these uh, Team Randoms. Get to see different Civs. So while we're waiting, I can update you at what's going on um, during the rest of this weekend. So I'll be casting the real-time strategy league games right after these games. Uh, we'll see how many I get to. And those will be best of threes. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, at 10 GMT, we have the Max versus Leary. Let me turn down this name. We have the Max versus Leary, um, casted right here on Vubly Official. Um, those wrecks will be... Uh, done by Milford. Then we'll have a Clash of the Hippo match two hours later at Sunday at 12 GMT. Uh, the Viper versus ACM, also casted by Milford. Also be casted by, uh, will also be casted in the Viper's point of view and on the um, Mem's channel. Then four hours after that, Sunday 16 GMT, we'll have Loiser and, and Yingwa, also casted by uh, Milford and Membrio. And then uh, Sunday 19 GMT, three hours after that, We'll have uh, Vinchester versus Mel Melkor, uh, casted by SMB. A pretty busy week, busy weekend this weekend. Uh, if you have missed it, we had the T90 series. Uh, I think at 12 GMT, something around those lines. Uh, Yo versus um, Yo versus the Viper. He'll have those uploaded. And pretty good games from what I've been told. And then next week, I believe we have Milkford's 36-hour uh, stream. I think he's trying to one-up Membrio <laughs> with his 24-hour stream. So we're going to see a 36-hour th stream from Milkford. And then I think the week after that, we'll have the LAN finals in China. So plenty to look forward to. And just in the, in the not-so-distant future, we're going to have SMB um, host a... Um, a donation stream, essentially, to help support his Masters of Arabia 2v2 tournament. Which will be getting started in a month or two. <laughs> That's a good one, SMB. <laughs> I'm just joking, Nilford. Hello, my name is Nobody. Welcome to the fourth game of the Absolute Random Cup. We're going to have the Brazilians versus the Czech team. Over on the bottom left side, we have Fiege playing as the Koreans. Oh my god, love these civs. And on the top left side, we have Dogao playing as the Japanese. On the bottom right side, we have Yannick playing as the Japanese. And on the top right side, we have Mango playing as Koreans. So Koreans versus Japanese on the top, and then Koreans versus Japanese on the bottom. I'm going to keep my eye out for laming, because we've seen a lot of laming so far right now. Uh, looks like they're just scouting their own bases at the moment, which is a little bit surprising. And I can't remember what the name of this map is, if um, someone in the chat wants to remind me. It looks like an, uh, a map I've seen before. As you can see from the map, water control is going to be very essential early on. I don't think uh, that essential later on. Uh, plenty of deep fish in the sea here. Uh, plenty of gold on this map, it looks like, as well. Decent amount of gold. A lot of gold in the back here. And a decent amount of stone as well. So we're going to see a, a bit of an interplay between uh, water and land. And I don't see any laming here. These two boars for Yan are going to be pretty exposed. I think he's going to try to guard these. Especially since he's directly across from VH. Anyway, while, while I keep my eyes out to see if there's any laming, we'll take a look at the player's maps. VH has some uh, lureable deer here. Two forward stones. Something you might want as Koreans. Uh, playing against Japanese here, Japanese halbs are going to be pretty good against the Korean war wagons. 
So I don't know if we, we will see uh, War Wagons in this matchup. But maybe Stone not as essential. Gold is well protected. And Woods are well protected. So pretty good map from VH, I would say. He's pretty close to the water as well. And we do see the Boar Lure here. Yannick not guarding his scout. He's going to be a little bit ahead here. And he's just seen it right now. He's going to move back. This is a pretty easy lure for VH. It just has to get a screen away. And Yannick's going to try to do his best to try to block this boar. We have seen Thiage fail in one of these uh, boar lures in the previous games. But it looks like he's going to get away with it this game. So one boar up from Thiage playing as the Koreans. And yeah, oh my god! Yannick's going to try to return the favor. This villager just needs one more hit. He's going to try to block it. Get one, get one more hit! And wow, just lost a villager. So Thiage is going to be up one boar. And down a village. This scout, and he's gonna steal, steal the scout, steal the boar as well. I can't even talk right now. I'm too excited. And if Yannick gets this, he's definitely gonna be at an advantage here. Fiage losing a villager very early on. Players only on 13, 14 population right now. And I would bet he's able to pull this off too. The scout still has a ton of health left. As long as this boar doesn't get caught. Which it's thinking about, it's desperately thinking about running back. Just a little bit farther. Around the stone mine, around the corner. And Yannick's gonna be able to take this, no problem. So Yannick is going to be a villager up here. And a Bora. Or actually, that was his own boar, so he's not going to be a Bora. My bad. Uh, one thing Yannick doesn't have, though, is his two sheep here, which I don't know how essential it is. He's going to take a very bad dock position. Uh, he should have scouted this. Um, he obviously doesn't right now. He doesn't see this deep fish here. And even though it's farther away than the shore fish, it's definitely going to be worth it. Just because deep fish collect so much faster. Yeah, so Yannick's stealing his own boar. And he's going to be looking for his sheep. I think he'll be able to find it. DH, he's going to be able to take... Uh... Actually, I can't even tell how many boar each player has. Them. It's one thing I didn't look at when I started the game. DH is going to take some deer here anyway. Let's take a look at Yannick's map. He has an exposed lumber line, it looks like. Could wall here help uh, close it off? A stone not going to be really that essential for Japanese, I don't think. Nice protected gold. His wood line's not as nice as a Fiage, so I think Fiage has a better map here. And it, definitely his gold is much more exposed. Dogao's going to be the first to click up the next age. I do expect to see him do a galley rush here. Japanese, the much better water sieve. With um, a better dark age. Um, extra armor and health on the fishing ships. Better uh, fishing ship collection rate. And the galley line of sight bonus. Mango's going to start on some early walls here. And he's going to be the second to click up. Going for a little bit of gold here. Doesn't have any farms though, so I expect to see maybe two archer ranges. Or um, some galleys. So Japanese, what can we see from the Japanese? They're going to have a stronger water build, as I just said. Uh, archer is going to be a must for both civs. Neither civ getting bloodlines. Japanese have the stronger infantry. Maybe we see... I don't want to say halves. The only reason I think we'd see halves is to counter some war wagons. Or counter some siege. So I think Arch Arch is going to be a big thing in this uh, in this matchup. And if it is a big deal in this matchup, then perhaps those Korean onagers can uh, can really get some good use out of them. So Dugao, he's going to be the first up. Two docks going to start pumping away. And as you can see on this map, the rush distance distance is very close. So Mango might have a little bit of trouble defending his fishing ships here, especially since his doesn't have the extra health or, or armor. And Mango's going to be the next up. Question is, will he be too late up? And I have the I have the feeling uh, the answer is going to be yes. Let's see what happens on the bottom side though. Vh, he's a little bit, a little bit sooner clicking up than Yannick. Yannick has had the poor fish. 
and really, the, I think the Japanese should have a much better Dark Age than the Koreans, so um, they're going to be a little bit behind here. Going to go forward with two villagers. I don't know what for. As you can see, Phage not able to have access to a stone, but you're not going to tower rush with two villagers. He's going to plop down an archery range. And I'm not sure how much you can do with these. This, uh, these lumber lines and this gold pretty safe, as long as there's a little bit of a small wall in the back. And you can see Phage uh, doing some nice walls through here as well. Probably would go with a few skirmishers. First few galleys out from Dogao, and no more fishing ships from Mango. Uh, looks like all three went down. Just uh, running away on the bottom here. And that's going to be a big loss. First archer range should see a few archers or skirmishers. Two archer ranges from Yannick. I'm going to give him some good map control here. But uh, I don't know how much damage he'll be able to do. And Fiege is going to take the water, uh, the botter. <laughs> I can't say anything correct. Fiege is going to take the water here. So both Brazilians taking control of the water. They're going to have some great food. Some great food income. Hopefully get up to the next age sooner. And that could put, put the Czech players in a pretty bad uh, position. Um, tower going to go up in the front here. I'm not sure what use that is. BH thinks it's a, a big enough threat, and he's going to place down a counter tower. I don't know, maybe VH wants to really have access to a stone. And yet it can lose the scout. And it looks like Yannick really does want to take away the stone from the Korean player. Uh, water... Uh, the... Bottom water, pretty much lost. And not a lot going on. Topside, we're going to see a skirmish with some skirmishers. And I think Mango will have enough to defend here. He's getting fletching. And nice wall from Dogao. Look at this. Pretty beautiful. He's going to wall through here as well. Could even see a team wall if he wants to wall through here. And Yannick got what he wanted. He got the stone. We'll see how that plays out later in the game. The stone's still accessible, though. And Yannick is going to go for a sneak attack here. Down 200 points in the score lead. Uh, down 200 points right now. So they need to make it up, especially since there's going to be a lot of food income from the Brazilian team. With the help of some galleys. Able to bust through Mango's walls. That's a ton of archers, though. Pretty decent archer micro. And looks like these four skirmishes are going to be enough. Padded archer armor now coming in for a lot of the players. And this raid could be devastating. Five archers. That's a ton of archers. Able to just about three shot these villagers. No reaction from Dogao yet. He needs to pull these villagers from the lumber line. Still no reaction. Two villagers going down. Third villager is going to go down. Finally, a small palisade wall. It's not going to be enough. Going to lose three villagers. Are we going to see four villagers? There goes the fourth villager. And she's not going to get away. She thought she was gonna, gonna, going to get away, but she's not going to get away. And these archers also have the armor, but two skirmishers coming back to defend. And there's a fifth villager going down. Villagers now, they, they're going to say they're going to have enough, and they're going to try to batter these archers. The armor really helps in this situation. And there goes a sixth villager as well. Going to try to get... Oh, no, this villager is going to live, though. On the bottom side, it looks pretty even. Fiege has a little bit more army, I believe. But no armor. And that raid really is going to help to um, help um, help bring back this game for the Czech players. I'm not sure why the wall was deleted. But Mango's going to get yet another villager in this game. Yet he's still 300 points behind in score. Could be due to all this extra fishing that Dogao is getting. And let's look at Mango's KD. It says 9 and 13 right now. Villager number 36 for Mango. Dogao on 29 villagers plus 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fishing ships. So actually stronger economy for Dogao despite losing those extra villagers. Castle H coming from Fih, he's going to be the first one. Looks pretty safe here. And we did see the wall come up in the back as I predicted. We see a bit of a sandwich here, but it's not going to be nearly enough. Castle Edge coming in from Dogao as well. Hard to tell who got more kills and deaths here, I believe. It's hard to tell because um, they're not going to clean this up. And two, two galleys going to try to win back water control here. Gonna need more than two galleys. Actually, Yannick's gonna go up to another uh, another dock. Maybe we'll see fish fire ships from him. He's not gonna be up anytime soon, though. Yeah. And as you can see, VH and Dugout with all that extra fishing, uh, able to click up much sooner than the Czech team. Look how much fish this, this, this is. Japanese fishing ships as well. So much fish. Mango finally click up into the next age, and pretty decisive uh, score lead for for the Brazilians right now. Mango is still trying to be a nuisance. He's going to go to the same well twice. It looks like on this top side. Dogao is going to quickly try to wall this off. He's not going to get this bottom done, though. And he's in the castle age now. He's going to defend with a few crossbows. Elite Skirmisher coming in. Again, both these civs pretty weak, uh, pretty weak knights, so we're not going to see any knights to counter these guys. They're going to be pretty beefy here. And there's GG. Just the fish boom is going to be too much here. Um, lost water early on. Uh, surprisingly, Yannick should have had, um, I think he should have had a much quicker uptime, uh, probably due to losing his, uh, maybe his boar being delayed. So Fiege is, um, Fiege is lame, although he didn't get the boar, and even lost a villager, maybe it was enough to delay Yannick and eventually win water control. Take a quick look at the achievements. And not much to say on the timeline. More units, uh, more units killed and units lost. EH getting the most units killed, 30 to 20. Pretty good ratio. Dogout just about even. Oops. I would, I would definitely not say that the... That the CZ team didn't try for water. Um, it's just really hard to get back on water once you've lost it. Um, I think you kind of expect the Japanese to have a better dark age, maybe. Uh, they do save quite a bit of wood on their buildings uh, over the Koreans and uh, a little bit of a fishing ship bo uh, boost. So it's not surprising I think they got up that early, although I think the Korean player on the top side was uh, was definitely much slower. So not surprising they lost on the top side, and then on the bottom side you had the boar steel. Not much you can do there. Anyway, score is 2-2 right now. We're going to have a tied game. We're going to have... This will be the game for all the money. And winner will go into the finals here.
Who is playing today in our, in real time strategy league? Let's check. So as it says on AOC Zone, I'm scheduled to cast the Jedi Z versus CSA. I'm not exactly sure who are in each of these clans. They're going to be starting right now. So we'll see if I can't catch the second game from that. After those two play, it's going to be a best of three. So we'll see uh, two to three games from that. Um, in about, uh, I think, one or two hours time, we're going to see another matchup. I think it's going to be Slipknot versus someone else. I can't remember exactly who. But uh, Fiage will be in Slipknot. And it looks like for, I'm checking right now, for the Jedi, it's going to be Let's Improve uh, Pran Pineapple and Robo versus Drew, Sanders, and Wood. And they should get started right about now. Oh, it's just two two maps for each team. All right. So it should be quick games. Hey, what's up, Hidden Gamer? So last game, last game for all the money. Let's see what the settings are. We've got Coastal. Not the map I was expecting. Hidden free choice of civs. Hmm. What civs would I pick on Coastal? Probably Vikings and Japanese, I think? Maybe Vikings and Mayans? That would be good if the Vikings went on water and then could sling the Mayans later. I would go with Vikings and Mayans. What, we, what do you guys think? What civ would you go with? Hello, my name is Nobody. Welcome to the last game in this uh, best of five in the Absolute Random Cup semifinals between the Czech team and Brazil team. In the top right corner, we have Fiage playing as the Vikings. And on the bottom, we have Dogao playing as the Huns. In the left side for the Czech team, we have Yannick playing as the Mayans and Mango playing as the Vikings. So I was right on this prediction, Mayans and Vikings. So score right now 2-2. Winner goes winner gets uh winner moves on to the finals. And loser gets uh kicked to the bronze place match. Don't see any laming going on right now. It's a very interesting map. Um not a symmetrical map for sure. It looks like Dogout already Xing either where to wall or where to put his dock. I think he's gonna go for a forward dock here. These two sheep, pretty vulnerable. I'm not sure whose sheep these are, actually. I suspect they're mangoes. Oh my god, look at how many deer this is. This is at least three deer patches. I'm not sure exactly whose sheep these are, but uh, mango's going to take them. I think they're his. Anyway, let's look at the sub matchups. I'm, let's start with Fiage, because I'm already on his point of view. Okay. Playing as the Vikings. Vikings the most dominant water sieve, of course. Cheaper docks and cheaper galleys, as well as a pretty good feudal age economy. So they're going to be, their main job is going to be secure the water here. Fiage is going to have some good fishing if he chooses his dock in the right position. A lot of fish over here. A lot of fish on this top side. Pretty dead space over here. Don't know what happened over there. And not much on this backside, so as long as Fiage picks a good dock position, it'll work, work out pretty well from him. However, Mango, Mango's also going to be the Vikings. He can choose to dock through here, and he'll have some pretty, oh, actually, not so great fish. It's pretty much dead all through here. I don't know what happened. This is a sewer leak or something. And, uh, just, just a few fish through here. I'm definitely not going to want to galley rush that or put more than one dock there. Uh, hopefully we see Mango go on this top side. So Vikings, their main job going to be in the water. And Vikings later on could sling their uh, allies here. We have the Mayans with Yannick. Their job, of course, is going to go archers, plumed archers. Maybe they compete on water, maybe they don't. It's definitely going to be very strong to see the Vikings sling the Mayans, however. 
and the mines go into castles and plumed archers. The Huns, on the other hand, usually think usually think about uh, paladins, knights, in a team game. Don't see as much cavalry archers. And maybe we see a Vikings. Uh, maybe we see that his Vikings ally uh, sling him to get out some paladins. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how it goes. Doc positioning. Poor doc position from Mango. And he will have access to this deep fish over here, but just a very unfortunate position. There's no way he could have predicted it. Sometimes you want to look at the color of the water. As you can see, it's quite... Uh... Oh, and we have a boar steal. Yannick could have steal the boar from uh, Dogao. I don't believe the Brazilians have a restart at this point. And he's going to get away with it pretty easily. Where is the scout from, uh, from Dogao right now? Can't exactly tell. It's, uh, where is the yellow? He's going to be luring in some deer, so he's going to try to compensate for this. And a lot of villagers on uh, sheep right now. A little more than you'd normally have. And it's going to get away with this easy. going to have three boar. He's playing his mines. So you're going to have a little extra food on each one of these boars. And he's gone for a backdock. Beautiful fish. He's going to have food for, uh, for ages here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a fast castle because of this. So, Gao, he's really struggling for food. Does have a nice deep fish here. Uh, pretty decent fish. Not so many fish in here. And VH, he's got a decent dock as well. Is Mango the only one getting screwed on the dock position? And Scout getting walled in! It looks like the Scout's gonna go down, and there it goes. That's really, that's a nice play. And there goes the Scout for Mango. So Mango's having a really tough time right now. No scout, poor fish. He's gonna start to wall. And maybe we see an early sling from him. I think he suspects. Let's go over to Mango's point of view. What does he see? He clearly sees that this uh, this uh, lake is not worth crushing. So maybe he goes for a quick sling. We'll see how that goes. Adjusting your strategy based off of your map. And Dogao, is he gonna go for a forward wall or is he gonna try something sneaky? This gold is very exposed. This wood line is also exposed to a tower. And Fie and Yannick, he's kind of in a corner here. Uh, the way he's walled himself off. This gold is also forward, and two stones are forward. So a tower could be devastating if it's placed right here. But no, that's not going to happen. Dogao's just going to wall up. He's going to go with some forward walls. Yannick's going to go with some back walls. It's going to cost him a little more resources. And we see the players going up. Delgado's going to be the first to go up. He is on... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. He's on pretty little food. He's going to go for a galley rush here. BH also probably going to see a galley rush from him. Mango, I imagine just a straight sling. I mean, I'm not sure what this outpost is for. I'm going to make very nice use of this. Uh, I'd laugh if this villager killed this uh, scout. I'm going to make very nice uh, use out of this uh, deer patch. Can even take some of these shore fish. And players communicating their walls. So Mango's going to do his quick sling onto the mine player, which I think could be very strong here. Mine's probably a better sieve to sling than the Huns, I think. Here's the first few galleys from Dogao. Question is, is VH ga uh, galley rushing? This could be some wasted resources if he is. And he clearly is. He's going to waste his resources on three galleys, and he has three docks up when he probably only needs two. So this could be a little bit of an advantage of docking this small lake. Two galleys moving out from Dogao. I expect Yannick is building his galleys right now. He's got a lot of fishing ships to protect, but only one dock, where Dogao is on three docks. Remember, the Viking bonus is a team bonus for cheaper docks. And always have horse collar being made. Sling confirmed. Here's some stone walls from Mango. 
Castellay is now from Yannick. I think he's going to be pretty tough here. Yannick, what is he going to do? Is he going to do some galleys or some fire ships when he gets up? Could lose a few fishing ships here. And down goes the first fishing ship. Yannick's not really reacting right now. On this top side, <laughs> sending one of the galleys out, I, I think it stopped. I, either this was deleted or it stopped this wall. And Yannick's going to madly try to get this wall up. Galley's going to move back at the wrong time. It's going to come back now, but that wall is definitely going to go up. Or no, Yannick's going to go forward with a castle. But this is such smart uh, walling by Dogout here. Going for some stone walls will severely delay this push. And we can even see more stone walls just come up through here. It's not going to cost them a lot of stone at all. Complete uh, water control for Dogao. Dogao should be able to fish it up here. And Yannick is getting the resources to click up to the next stage, it looks like. Extremely bad spot to push for this push. And ideally, the map should go into your strategy making. Especially, you should see that Dogao has walled through here. Stonewall is by him, I think, a very smart decision, especially Stonewall in this particular pos position. Villager now can move back and make even four, five, six layers of Stonewall without that much uh, investment. And the resources uh, put into these galleys pretty much wasted. And there you go. Pretty cheap walls. Um, no Mayans player here, though, to help with the cheaper walls. And what else is going on right now? Not much. Let's go to the Fiege's point of view. Fiege, I would expect him to start slinging. He's actually going to go to Castle Age and get cart cartography here. So maybe a Castle Age Sling? I think a Castle Age Sting would actually be much more beneficial for a Huns player. They're going to need a lot of food, a lot of gold if they want to go into Paladins. Uh, for the for the Mine Sling, you kind of just think about, you know, getting stone for castles and just getting the upgrades for the Plume Darchers. Plume Darchers themselves, much cheaper unit than Paladins. Which uh, also makes them as deadly. And if I was dug out here, I wouldn't hesitate just to put as many stone walls as this villager could possibly put. Just keep walling, just keep walling behind. Really no harm to it. Dogao needs all the time, I think, to uh, be able to boom his economy and afford the units he needs. First layer is down, second layer is going down. And you know what I would love? This is just screaming right now, demolition ships. I would love to see demo demolition ships. And this is smart by BH2, also trying to help out his ally here. Yannick, he's, Yannick is going to dock here. And if he does dock, he's able to get the transport out. I think the VH has uh, anticipated this. He is the Viking player still. So he should have an advantage here. And hopefully prevent any transports from going across. We can see the walls through here. And what is Dogao doing? Second town center. He's going to try to boom up his economy as quickly as possible. Three town centers. Plenty of fish. He's got to have tons of food at this point. Let's see his food. <laughs> My bad. He doesn't have tons of food. But he's getting heavy plow and bow saw. So those are food upgrades. Mango, he's got a little his little uh, Viking farming economy here. Age is really fishing it on this top side. 
lot of X's. Oh, transport! Transport! The walls need to go up instantly right now. Plume nurses, they could be through. We're gonna see some quick gates. Here comes the first gate. It's still not closed, though. And I don't know if this is completely walled. 700 HP, 300 HP on this one. Just about 400 HP. And it's gonna be much more difficult to wall through here. We're gonna see a siege workshop. That was that was critical, and as you can see by how many uh, X's they gave. If they had noticed just maybe a second earlier, these plumed archers would have sank in the ocean. But it's gonna be a big thorn in Dugout's side. He's gonna have to go with the siege workshop and a mangonel, which is costly. And it's just gonna this crossing is just so it's so close. It's gonna be hard to get patrol here with galleys. Patrol on the bottom side, patrol over here with galleys. Although it looks like the top side is pretty secure. Yeah, she's gonna get coinage. She's gonna go up to three town centers here, so gonna help support his ally. Plenty of fishing ships for him. It's got at least 30. And we could see some nice mangonel shots. It's gonna take two here. And boom, boom, boom. There's a second one. Blue Narch and Meganel shots never really do it for me. They have too much health. First military building from Dugout. He's gonna go into some paladins. Still booming his economy. He's gonna be. He's at 48 villages right now. Right now, strongest economy from Yannick. Three town centers at his own base. So he's Imperial Age, he's gotten all the Imperial Age upgrades, but they really haven't done anything for him. Fortified walls now done from Fee Age. Uh, why Vikings get fortified walls is beyond me. At least from a historical perspective. And about a, uh, about a 1,200 difference between these. Wouldn't have to have see C C drims here. C drims are going to be able to fire through an extra layer of stone walls. And this is gonna, this is so difficult to get through. Just mangonels behind fortified walls, with a few galleys behind this as well. Dugal's still buying time. He's actually pretty much tied with Yannick, as well as VH. Despite scores still flipping back and forth, um, military counts as a larger part of your score than economy, I believe. And Yannick realizes he's not going to get through these walls anytime soon with these mangonels and, uh, and galleys. Going to lose a few galleys here. So he's going to go for the water as well. And he's already gotten Bracer, as well as Chemistry, so he could have a good chance here. Finally, Imperial Age from Dogal. Getting his economy rolling, he's not quite there yet. He's 60 villagers. So about half of where he needs to be. And we're going to see two combined fleets face off against the Imperial Fleet of Yannick. They just need to hold out until Dogal gets his Imperial Age upgrades in. Which are only fletching on these guys right now. And right now, I would not I would say it's not looking so good for the Czech team. But if they do get through somehow, it could do a lot of damage and flip the game. And once again, just Megano's not doing it for me against Plumed Archers. You need to have them behind to hit the Rams. This is going to get denied here. Castle's not able to protect these docks. Finally, Galleon coming in. Fully upgraded. Except for creating, I suppose. And a castle, that'll help slow down this push even further. Uh, if a trebuchet does come out, I'm sure the galleys will focus it down. And where are the demolition ships? We need to see the demolition ships. Uh, Vikings of I don't think Vikings get demolition ships. Or maybe... They don't get fire ships, for sure. I think they get demos.
So Dogout now into the next age. Doesn't have a huge surplus of food. Again, he doesn't quite have um, the economy he needs. 70 villagers now. He's working his way up. Got a few knights. Going to go into cavalry. Going to have to see uh, plate barring armor as well. But again, just very food intensive upgrades. Not going to be able to afford bracer. And Yannick is taking control of the water. So Yannick, he's done the first step. He's taking control of the water. Now we need to see some transports before these Cavalier get a lot of upgrades on them. Plate barding armor is just a, just a game changer when going against Plumed Archers. Looks like Fiege is going to lose a lot here. I wonder if we see Fiege going up to the next age or if he's going to continue to sling here. Because it would be nice to have a... The way the map is set up, it would be nice to have uh, an Imperial Age uh, Vikings player with cannon galleys. Here's the first transport. Ten plumed archers. Cavalier are moving in. They have plus four. That should be enough to deal with it for now. Problem is, Yannick has to do only ten at a time. Plumed archers getting back on the ship. And they're going to try to sail away. Or the, the Cavalier going to poke too many holes in the ship. The ship is getting away. And they're going to run with their tail between their uh, legs. With their plumes, I suppose. Scammel armor, I'm expecting to see some halbs here. Dogown now almost at 80 villagers. Yannick only at 90 villagers. I think he should have more villagers at this point. Maybe he's not been making enough uh, villagers from his town center. And here's Imperial Age from Fee Age. Once he gets Imp, as long as he has his docks still up, he should be able to take back water from Yannick. Fee Age, he's only keeping the wood and gold for himself. He's sending all of his food over to Dogao, who obviously needs it for a Cavalier, Paladin, those kind of upgrades. Paladin should be coming in really shortly. And the thing is, Dogao has the time, has the time to get these upgrades in. Not necessarily making too many Cavalier. Castle getting denied from Fee Age. Uh, are we going to see the walls come up in time? This villager is not walling. He decides he wants to take out the castle on his own. And we're going to have to see some rams before these walls go down. It looks like one tile actually still open. And this castle is not going to be completely walled off. What a waste of stone. Blast Furnace and Paladin now coming in. So all the upgrades for them. Paladin with uh, a 3 base armor. Plumed Archers with 5 base attack. Plumed Archers only able to do 2 damage versus uh, Paladin. As you can see here, they're already not doing that much damage as it is. And once again in AOC, walls win the day. This is, a, this is pretty funny. Looks like the walls of Mango actually protecting this castle. No idea what the plumed archers from Yannick are doing. Or why the paladins are scared of these plumed archers. And we should see the momentum swing right about now, I think. VH needs to get back on water. He's starting at the back. He's going to have to work his way around. Dogao, he should heavily invest into military at this point. He's up to 100 villagers, almost at that 120. Has his expensive upgrades in. Just needs to focus on military production, maybe some siege rams. And again, just cannon galleons would be devastating on this map. Castle going out with so many villagers, trying to protect this gold. And Fiege has the fleet, that honestly didn't need the castle.
And Yannick, he's just gonna take uh, take what he what he can get. He's gonna take this castle. We haven't seen any uh, any sea dram though from Yannick, I believe. Which may have been able to get through these walls. Remember, Huns don't get mang uh, don't get onager. We have a good combo here: halves and plumed archers versus just the paladins of Dogal. Uh, let's see who wins this match. <sighs> this part of the map incredibly important. Two golds in this area, and it splits the middle of the map in the middle as well as the stone. What might be super beneficial in this situation? Maybe some elite skirmishers. Flim Dirge is not able to do too much damage here, uh, but they do have more HP than a regular archer, and these halibs are just going to melt to the paladins, I believe. Stonewall is going to help out in this situation. I'll create a funnel. The thing is, one on one, a paladin will beat a halb, although it's not cost efficient. But if they take this fight, even though they lose more gold, they're ha able to have access to more gold. And Yenna's going to have to remass here again, making the building so to protect the plumed archers. And this castle's in danger of being sniped down. 130, 100 health, 50, and and there, down it goes. Didn't get the stone back. And Yannick's gonna be kicking himself for that. What is Mango still doing in feudal? There's nothing else he could do unless he wanted to contest water, which he can't even get on water over here. He'd have to build docks over here if he wanted to go to Imperial Age. Viking's army is extremely weak in the Imperial Age. All, uh, the best unit they have is Siege Ram and Arbalest. <laughs> I find it Yannick had the time to micro to hit that farm. Finally, Siege Ram for Dogao. This will be the game changer. Albs don't do that much damage for his Siege Ram. Uh, 8 damage, plus 3 bonus. You can see here. But Doga not able to have enough Paladins here. Has a ton of gold in the bank. Enough gold for, I don't know, maybe 20 Paladins? I think we should see something else out of it. Maybe some uh, Elite Skirms. Blockade from Fiege. And doesn't want to go past these two castles, which now have ballistics. Slowly try to build his uh, build his fleet back up with four docks. On the top side, is this combo too much? Just the halves and plumed archers. Is the Mayan combo OP? <laughs> Thanks for all the follows in the stream. I have been noticing them. Mango click to castle, something I didn't see? Oh! A lot of raiding coming in over from Dugout. He got in somehow. I don't know how he got it. Maybe it transport! Transport over into into his base. Gonna kill a lot of villagers here. Mango now at 60 villagers. Losing a lot of villagers. Halbs, they're gonna be pretty slow in response here. This is such a nice this would have been such a cute uh, farming uh, farming colony he had. Little houses and his little uh, little fishermen here. But uh, it was not to be. Castle H from Mango. He's going to want to reboom his economy now.
And I keep stressing this, if you want your Viking player to do something on land, uh, Elite Skirmisher would, would be the thing. Will Mango have enough time in this game to recover? That's a lot of Paladin. Should be able to clean this up. Question is, what happens after he cleans it up? Is he able to retake the gold? Mango now starting trade. Uh, both teams should have an adequate trade line. And that's a lot of Paladins. That's what? 30 Paladins? Elite Cannon Galleon from Fee Age has complete control in this top side. I don't know how much... He's even taken the dock over here. That's a smart dock. That's extremely smart. And that's really gonna, really gonna hinder the CZ's trade. And that could potentially be what sides this game. They're gonna try to trade long ways through this way. Whereas uh, the side team, not side, I keep saying, for the Brazil team, they can trade right all along through here. It's gonna be a much better trade route. Nice positioning for the plumed archers. And you can see how little damage the plumed archers doing to this paladin. This paladin just able to run away. And finally got him. Sea Dream's cleaning everything up. They're gonna move on on the castles. Kinigali might be a little premature here. It looks like he doesn't have the numbers on water to back it up. Finally, Bo saw for a Mingo. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do maths on stream. Three, six, nine. Yeah, that's at least that's at least what he said. Forty and fifty. And here's the big momentum swing right now. Scores only about a few hundred, um, a few hundred difference, and I think it's going to start to get worse here. Siege Ram Train coming in through the middle, absolute disaster now. Pushing in on two sides, top, bottom, even a bit over here. What's the answer to this? Just more halves. Need to see 100, 200 halves. Ship's just firing as the units cross the path over here. <laughs> sea Dream's now getting through the top. Paladins are going to come into support. Let's see how much these uh, these Sea Dreams can tank. On the bottom side, Hal's able to clean this up. But now we have a now we have an actual we have actually two units in this army now. Um, two units that do damage. We now have galleons and uh, paladins. Pa galleons will be able to take out the halves. And not enough halves. Fuge taking control of the water. Both, both Brazil players, as you can see, much lower score than Yannick himself, uh, despite Mango being uh, pretty much out. And on this top side, we have a breach in the wall. Mango, he's gonna, he's gonna take a lot of the losses here, down to 60 villagers. And there's the GG. Push too strong. The strategy just didn't work out. Uh, I don't know if it was the map. I wouldn't say it's a poor strategy. It was. Different things that just uh, contribute to losing this game, having a uh, poor dock position, uh, being forced into this, uh, you know, no grush strategy, placing the first castle here, allowing Dugout to get these first stone walls and the wall behind here, um, allowing Dugout to get out um, a nice healthy eco, some nice paladins. And Yannick, I think he did a pretty good job on the water, actually, but uh, it wasn't enough to win him the game. Take a look at the achievements now. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be casting some real-time strategy league games right after this one. Again, it clearly the biggest score in this game. Quick uptime. Most units lost, however. And Mango 0 to 51 hasn't killed a single unit this game. It's been bullied all game. 25,000 resources slung. So final score is 3-2.
Uh, the Brazilian team will move on to the finals where they will play where they will play the winner of MBL and Leary versus Error and Tato. Anyway, let's switch over to real-time strategy league. Let me quickly uh, change the scoreboard here. In fact, let's not waste any time. I'm just going to turn off the scoreboard. Thanks, Potato AOC. I appreciate it. This is something I'm trying to do regularly every Saturday, just about at this time, 22 GMT, um, either here on Voobly Official for some uh, rec casting or some live tournament games or on my own stream. So every 22 GMT, you'll have something to look forward to, either here or uh, either here or on my own stream, uh, twitch.tv slash nobody41. I'm going to change the title quickly, and we'll jump into the Real-Time Strategy League game. It's going to be Jedi versus uh, somebody else. We'll see. And I'm keeping my eye on the Slipknot game. We have CSA versus Jedi. 